Hey everybody, this is Watchman Alexander. I'm here with Jared Cressman and Tom Dunn, and they have something to tell you about a new resource that they've made available. Uh, so first of all, what was that, a year or two years ago that you released uh, Detestable? Two years ago we released Detestable. Okay. Almost two years and It's like July of 2016 mm -hmm. or something? Okay, and now you've put out This Is War, a new DVD. Yes. Is One of these days I'll get to watch it. <laughs> Is this a follow-up to Detestable? No, it's not a follow-up to Detestable, but it's a it's another film. And I was going to put some elements of the testimonies that were in um, in Detestable in there, the SRA testimonies, but I decided to cut them because they didn't fit. So uh, I did do some of those, uh, one of those interviews at least, but it got cut from the film. This is more of a spiritual warfare film, just... There, there's some there's some things in there about Luciferianism and Masons and things like that, but it's it's not this it's not what was going on in the first film, Detestable. Okay. Let me just go ahead and read a little bit of what it says on the back. From the exposure of modern day Christian occultism and demonic attacks to overcoming past abuse and breaking secret oaths, this is war introduces you to a cast of individuals who come from all walks of life. Join former criminals and drug addicts as they reveal their scars and share their stories. Journey from the trenches of the war for life in our nation's capital to the studio solace, a solace of a hip hop, hip hop artist, if I can speak, in the California desert with many stops along the way. So that sounds pretty good. Um, first thing I want to ask is just in that first sentence it says Christian occultism in quotes. Now, traditionally, Christian occultism would be Gnosticism. Is that what you're talking about, or is it something else? Well, and also, it, it, yeah, a lot of people would consider it an oxymoron, that it was impossible in some respect. But yeah. I think in the context in which this was written, um, what we've seen is a lot of infiltration of Eastern mysticism into the church. And there are a lot of Christians. I, I don't... There are a lot of different varying degrees to Gnosticism. And I would, in my opinion, yeah, it would be a form of Gnosticism. But I... You have a lot of Christians that have been sold um, subtle deceptions inside the church, where they think they are um, they think they are accurate in experiences and things that they're partaking in in the church. And in reality, it's a form of the occult that has subtly slipped in and been made unaware. And through these experiences that they have. They're opening the doors to demonic powers and principalities, yeah. unaware that are masquerading as Christ. And so I do think there are Christians that can have authentic saving faith, but uh, can be uh, tricked or fooled into partaking in practices in the church through worship and other means um, that are actually, you know, it's actually a form of Eastern mysticism. And so in relationship to everything, I'm probably not articulately explaining well. It's pretty much what we've got as far as the interviews is talking about that. And one person in particular who experienced that and was a Christian occultist. Okay. So things like, what, give me some examples. You were talking about uh, mantra-like songs in church. Are we talking about um, some kind of Christian yeah. gift divination with tarot cards or something like that? S sort of, yeah, e exactly. There, there are a lot of different possibilities for what we're saying. To be honest with you, I am still contemplating this issue in depth because it is so complex. I'm still formulating my own opinion on it. In particular, in this film, what you see is a woman who believed that she was following angelic spirits and the spirit of Christ in operating and helping people, and it turned out it was completely counterfeit, right? So you had this inability to distinguish... Uh, between the real marks of the Holy Spirit and the counterfeit forms of the Holy Spirit, and it's very easy for people in churches that don't, that aren't discerning of these subtle deceptions, to allow counterfeits to move in and lead them into practices that are ultimately ungodly, even though they're masquerading as something that's holy. It's counterfeit. So if gold dust starts falling and angelic footprints start appearing, on yes, the that would floor, be a counterfeit form of something. How do you discern whether or not that's a real sign, or if that's something that's coming from a, a spirit that's masquerading? I always, I always ask myself, does this point back to the centrality of Christ? The Holy Spirit, when operative, always points back to Jesus Christ. Oftentimes, in these experiences, 
the, this this counterfeit form of the spirit is not pointing back to Christ. It's pointing back to people, and it whips people up into a frenzy, and it points back to to relying and trusting in the experience. It does not point back to the centrality of Christ. The Holy Spirit will always point back to Christ. So if you're in a Holy Spirit-filled church and it's not pointing back to Christ, you're not in a Holy Spirit-filled church. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. And order, right? There, there should be order in the congregation because God is a God of order. He's not a God yeah. of chaos. Sometimes we see this get completely out of control. Like you said, frenzy. Yeah, seizures on the altar, things like that. You know, in this case, we actually, we talked to a woman who wrote a book called The Beautiful Side of Evil. Her name is Joanna Michelson. Um, she got swept up in a form of Christian occultism and ultimately led her into um, uh, working with a psychic surgeon in Mexico named Pachita. And uh, this, this, I mean, she went about as far down that rabbit trail as she could possibly go. Um, the story is incredible and amazing, but she wrote this book. It's called The Beautiful Side of Evil, and that's exactly what she was exposing. There is a beautiful side to evil. It is very deceptive. It is hard to discern at times, but we have to. We have to know the Word of God that we can accurately discern the counterfeit. Yeah, it's, it's so similar because that's the most effective thing, right? The enemy wants to give us something that's 90% truth and 10% false or, well, it, or even more. We're surrounded by beautiful grass and gravel here. You don't ever see this counterfeited. It's abundant and it's worthless at the same time. But the things that you see counterfeited are the things that are of great value. You see diamonds counterfeited. You see $100, $100 bills counterfeited. Things that are of great value are counterfeited. Jonathan Edwards wrote about this in a book called uh, The Religious Affections. The devil is not going to counterfeit worthless things in the church. The holy affections and the gifts of the Spirit are of infinite value to the church. It would only make sense that he would counterfeit and use it for his own purposes because he doesn't have access to the real thing and he wouldn't bestow it upon the people if he did. So these forms run rampant because they're easily accepted by those that can't discern between the real and the counterfeit. Yeah, it's kind of like the opposite side, <clears throat> the opposite side of the pendulum from saying that there are no gifts and spirits and, and just everybody needs to be yeah. like a bump on a log when they're in church. Oh, you have radical extremism on both sides. You know, I'm no, no cessationist, but I do have a much more conservative approach, and I won't, I absolutely will not get in line uh, with a lot of the modern-day charismatic churches because I believe they've been sold counterfeits that they have been incapable of discerning. Tom, what else is in this film? Um, well, what you're going to see in that film is a lot of testimony. Uh, conversion testimony. You know, I'm thinking of uh, J. Brett Prince, who his um, his testimony has been kind of making its rounds on the internet recently. This guy was a, uh, a tattoo artist from Columbus, Ohio, who was a Luciferian, who was a Mason, and he went as far as he could go, getting involved in rituals, getting involved in the occult, and he found out there was nothing there. And he, he checked it all out, and he was like, he came to the conclusion that Jesus has got to be who he said he was. You know, just like, these, I mean, these are the um, these are the stories we hear of when atheists, you know, get saved and, and things like this. And he, he, he waited as long as he could, because he knew that if this was true, he was going to have to make some changes. And he talks about his, you know, his testimony in there and how he got saved and delivered and... Uh, renounced all that stuff. Uh, you're going to see also another testimony from a guy named Mark Salinas, who is a guy that I met in the hallway at Hear the Watchman conference in Dallas, Texas. I began talking to him a little bit, and the guy was on fire, and he um, he had a powerful testimony. I said, man, I would really like to take your testimony, put it in my film, so more people can hear what God has done in your life. And it was a powerful thing, you know. This guy was a gang member. He uh, would uh, do um, car theft, breaking into cars, uh, home invasions, and at one time on a home invasion, he got shot. And um, he was he was calling out to God, but he didn't know how to get a hold of God. He didn't have anybody in his life to tell him the truth of the gospel, and he was looking for salvation, but couldn't find it. And he called out to God, and, and you know he had a powerful witness, you know, uh, you know, uh, the presence of the Lord. And he's like, this is what I want. And he looked for it. He didn't find it right away. You know, he had that experience. And then he looked for it, and he finally figured out what was going on. And he accepted the Lord. He turned his life over to him. 180, 180, you know, serving God, ministering, evangelism. So, you, you know, you're going to see things like that. And then you're going to see things like uh, a young man by the name of Matt Moraz, who 
uh, struggle with drug addiction. And he kept having supernatural encounters where he would get attacked in his sleep or he would hear voices. And that, um, that eventually drove him into the arms of God. So um, this is a war, it, it just kind of runs the gamut of everybody from Johanna Michael to Michelson to somebody like Derek Gilbert who is a uh, anchor on Skywatch TV, who just kind of, who's been a friend of mine for years, and somebody I wanted just to kind of get in there and talk about the spiritual warfare and how the church is ignoring this, and that when they ignore it, it's causing problems, okay? Yeah. So, yeah. He's got big brains. It's probably yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and um, Derek Gilbert, you know, he was amazing in just sharing, you know, his heart, you know, on this subject and I, I've seen him do it for years and he was somebody that I definitely wanted to have in the film just to kind of uh, he's really good at communicating you know yeah uh, he's got a nice he's got a radio background yeah yeah and he's got a great voice man he looks good and uh, I, I just loved having him and interviewing him yeah his podcast review from the bunker and peering into darkness you know for the longest time it's I think it was peering into darkness yeah yeah but PID was, peering, peering into, into darkness, darkness. I mean, this is, he, he's been covering this. He's kind of, in my opinion, he's one of the original gangsters, you know, of uh, fringe podcasting, at least for me, and one of the first that I listened to, so it was yeah. amazing to have him. Yeah, it's great that you got him in there. Uh, why do you think God had you, you know, shine a light on these testimonies? They sound like powerful testimonies, but why these? Well, I think every single one of these testimonies are so important. Well, that was kind of abrupt. Sorry about that, guys. I discovered after the fact that this camera will only record files of a certain size. Once it reaches that file size, it, it shuts the video down automatically. So I didn't get the rest of the interview, unfortunately. But I just want to finish this up by reminding you to go to throughtheblack.com. You can take a look at all the Angry Sun media resources, including This is a War, The Testable, and some other other stuff. And also follow Through the Black on social media and on YouTube. They they do shows and put out interesting information all the time. So hope you go check it out. Those are two really good guys. I think they're doing good work. And that's it for me for right now. See you guys next time.